Hey everyone, welcome to what I hope is going to be a very short Avid tutorial. It's just on a single function, and that is the toggle source record in timeline function. This is something I use all the time. It's really handy, and I realized I was using it in some of the tutorial videos and not explaining what I was doing because I got some comments with people asking, hey, how are you doing that thing? And so I thought it'd be good to just have a quick explainer on it. Actually, right after I got some of those comments, just a couple days later, I was on a post house tour with some students. And one of the editors there mentioned that this was like their favorite feature in Avid and really speeds up their workflow. So I think it's worth sharing. So this is called toggle source record in the timeline. And first I'm going to show you how to access it and turn it on. And then I'll just kind of show you quickly what you might use it for. I have this map to my tab key. I don't think it's part of the default Avid keyboard, although I honestly haven't used the default Avid keyboard in over a decade. So I'm not hundred percent sure on that, but I'll show you where it is. So I'm going to go into my keyboard settings here and you can see this function right here, toggle source record in timeline, and I have it mapped to my tab key. You could map it wherever it is useful for you. And if you don't have it mapped and you're trying to find it, I can pull up my command palette. So command three on a Mac. And this is going to be in the other option. So I'll click on the other tab here. And you'll see there's all sorts of different options here that I can drag onto my keyboard. And it's right here. So as long as I have button to button reassignment, I can just take this and throw it right onto my keyboard there, which it already was there, so it didn't do anything. And now it will be mapped to whatever button you put it on. So that's the quick way to map this. Again, toggle source record in timeline. It's in the other tab of the command palette, and then put it wherever you want on your keyboard. It also does show up right here. You'll see right now I have it active. Now I have it inactive, and you'll see this lights up. So this is this uh, button on the top of the menu here. But again, I don't like having to go over here and find something to click. I want to just be able to hit a button and turn it off and on very quickly. So what this does is Right now I'm in my normal view, so if I scroll through my timeline here, you can see that it's showing what's in my record window. Again, source window on the left, record window on the right, which is normally where I'm building uh, my various sequences. And so you can see that showing up there. And on the left-hand side here, I have a clip, so I could you know, load up a video clip or I could load up a audio clip. And what this is gonna let me do is whatever's loaded up in here, it's going to let me see that down here. So for example, right now I have this audio clip loaded up. I'm gonna hit tab. You'll see this lights up, shows that now I'm looking at the source function instead of the record function. So in this case, let's say I wanted to sync this audio with something, so I needed to find my clapper. I didn't have a time code slate or anything, so I'm doing this manually. So I could turn on my waveform, and I could scroll through this quickly and look for something that looks like it might be a clapper, like this looks like it might right here. I think that's it. Looks like somebody called take one before they were quite ready for the marker. But then I could mark this here, and it just gives me an easy way to look at that instead of having to, you know, just sort of scroll through up here and try to find it. You know, I don't necessarily know where exactly what I'm looking for is. Pull up another clip, and this looks like it might be a clapper. Marker. Boom. Right there. So a quick way to do that and mark audio clips. That's one of the things I like to use it for is when I'm syncing. But I can use it for other things as well, and I just tab to go back to my normal view here. So let's say I had a, uh, I have this sequence I'm working on, and let's say I'd already edited, you know, some other sequence that I want to put in here. I'm like, actually, there's this flashback sequence that I want to put right between these two shots here, and I already edited that somewhere else. I could take this other sequence, and I could load this up in my source monitor, and then I can tab over, and I can actually see that sequence loaded up here and find, you know, where was that? In this case, sorry, I just have the same kind of clips. This was just a couple of clips from a class sheet that I grabbed and threw in here clip, but maybe I just want this part that has the length of this audio clip down here. So I'm going to set an in point there and set an out point there. And it's showing up here as well. So I can always go through and set in and outs here, but particularly if I have like a long sequence in here, or if I wanted to see the waveform or something, it just gives me a little handier view for me to be able to look at this like this instead of just having to rely on what's on my source monitor here and sort that out. Now, obviously I could in this particular case, so let me clear my in and out here. Let's say I wanted to do that. I could load up this sequence into my record monitor as normal and do the same thing, find, okay, there's my in and out. Now let me reload up this sequence. Now let me take this sequence and put it in here and still got that in and out marked. And then I could edit this in like so. So 
I'm not saying that you can't work around without this, but it's a lot easier if instead of having to like load a sequence up in here to see the waveform or look through the details of a sequence and find the particular section I want and then I have to bring it back in here if I'm going to try to edit it into something else, it's much easier for me if I can just sort of boom, hit tab or whatever button you map yours to, pop into this view down here, which is my source view. Again, you can see this little green highlight here showing that I'm now showing the source view and work with it that way and then pop back into my regular timeline view and I'm good to go. So that's toggle source record in timeline. Hopefully that is useful to some of you or if you ever saw me do it in another video and you didn't know how to do it, now you do. Good luck and enjoy that function.